Let's take a quick look at some of the common settings of a typical point light. Now, I'm assuming that as you light your levels, you're probably going to be placing a few of these around, and you really ought to know a few basic things on how you can set them up, change the color of the light, control its intensity, all that sort of stuff. So let's begin by selecting our point light. I'm going to press F4 to open this guy up. If you don't have a point light, just as a reminder, you can hold down the L key and click on any given surface, and that will create one for you. So with this light selected, you'll notice that there is a light category in the properties window, and we can then expand light component. Now the first place we're going to go to is point light component. This has some properties that are particular to point lights as opposed to spotlights or directional lights. And the important property I want you to know about in here is the radius of the light. This allows you to control how far away from the light source this light can travel. Beyond this radius, no light will be received from this particular light. And we can visualize that if we demaximize this viewport and take a look over here in the top view, the radius for this light is actually visible. It's this great big circle that you see here. If I change the radius to, say, 1200, you'll notice the circle gets smaller. Very straightforward, very easy to understand, which is great. Now, let's jump up to the, the light component area, which is not point light, just regular light component. There are a lot of properties in here, but not all of them do you really need to worry about right out of the gate. If you're new to lighting and you're just trying to set up a few simple lighting approaches just to get your levels going, here's some of the stuff you really need. The brightness of your light. This is fairly obvious. A setting of 1 is 100% intensity. You can set that down to 0.5 and your light will get dimmer. Or you can set it to 2 and your light will be twice as bright as it is at full power. So a lot of control right there. Now moving down, I do want to mention there are some check boxes here for whether or not you'd like to be able to cast shadows. If for some reason you have a light that you don't want to cast shadows, this is where you switch those off. You can also completely switch a light off by switching off its enable checkbox. And now that light is no longer working. Now in this case, you'll notice in my perspective viewport that as soon as I disable this light, the light goes to unlit mode. That's because the editor just discovered that there are no functioning lights, and so it tries to help you by literally toggling over to unlit mode. As soon as you switch the light back on, it switches back over to lit mode. So that's not what your level would look like. Actually, your level would be black. It's just the editor noticing that you don't have any functioning lights. Now, down from here, we have the light color. Another very easy to understand property. If we expand it, we have R, G, B, and A values. A is going to be for your alpha color. You don't really need to worry about that too much. But we have red, green, and blue. Of course, if you set all of these to their full intensities of 255, you get white light. If you don't want to handle this numerically, and most visual people won't, then you've got a color picker over here. If you click the little magnifying glass, which is currently labeled Find Object in Content Browser, but you can ignore that. And if you click it, this will give you a color picker. Optionally, you can click the little arrow next to this, and this will allow you to pick any color in the viewport, and it'll assign that color to your light. So if we click this object and then maybe grab this shade of green that's on the light, that's what color our light will be. So very cool. Now I'm going to set this back to white. Click OK. And oh, there we go. White. Excellent. Now... Continuing down from here, some of the other important uh, properties that you really ought to know about. Let me actually get out of the uh, light component category. We're going to collapse that back. Over here inside of the light mass category, we have settings that are completely specific to light mass. We have indirect lighting saturation. This allows you to control how much color information is transmitted when the light bounces around. So if you don't want really bright, intense colors to be transmitted to the next bounce, you can start to pull this down. Another really important one is your light source radius. This is different than the actual radius of the light, which controls how far the light travels. What this does is this allows you to change the radius of the theoretical emissive surface of the light. And you can see feedback on this in the viewport too. If I change this radius from 32 up to 64, you'll notice the little yellow sphere in here gets a little bit bigger. Now, the effect that you will get on this when you rebuild your level is that the, the larger your light source radius, the fuzzier your shadows will become. It's kind of like if you have a very small light, like an LED, and you shine it at an object, you can see the shadow of that object is a very, very crisp edge. 
And if you have a very large light, say maybe a large flashlight or something that has a very large emissive surface, and you shine that at an object, your shadows are going to become a little bit more diffused. They're going to get softer because more of that light is hitting from various incident angles. So that is a quick look at some properties you need to know, just some basics, how to change the overall radius of your light, how to change its intensity, change its color. If you want to affect the shadows, you can handle some of that uh, sort of stuff here in light mass, especially if you want some softer shadows. And that's all I wanted to cover here. Now, moving forward, we're going to take a look at actually lighting up our level. So that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.